Well, and along that line, then, I mean, obviously the city is having some, the, the economy is having some difficulty. Mm -hmm. So I think even more so now than ever, how the city spends its money, uh, what nonprofits and for profits it decides to subsidize, if any, is under a, even a brighter light. And so I wanted to segue and ask you about the city's financial situation. Now, you're going through the budget process. You've been through the budget process. I guess mm -hmm. it's going to go for the final decision on the 26th, the resolution of the final budget well, that, That'll be when we bring the budget out to the community for their comment, and then it'll come back to the city council after the, the community has had about a month to comment on the budget. It'll come back to the city council for a final approval on uh, June 24th at our okay. last of the June meeting. Now, you were, uh, the council I was at when the budget was being discussed, you were very focused on the capital fund. And I don't know if our viewers really understand the difference. There's these different funds. A general fund is really for operating the city business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Capital funds is for really capital projects like stormwater projects and sidewalks. And there's a wastewater fund. Um, and you tended, and I think rightfully so, focused on this capital fund, which, um, well, you want, you want what do you think? I mean, do you think the city's finances are okay? What do you think about these different reserves? And what do you think the city should do about it? Well, in the short term, we're in pretty good shape. The problem is the long term. Whether we're talking about the wastewater fund, the capital fund, it's the long term issue that, that where I think the city really is in serious financial difficulty. Because I, I think the analogy that I've used is like the airplane that took off, headed to the other side of the, of, the, of the Pacific or wherever, knowing that it didn't have enough fuel to reach the other side and it's just past the point of no return. Mm. You know, now what are we going to do? We are, we're, you, know, you can say, well, gee, that airplane's flying along you know, at altitude, at speed, it's on course, it's on time, everything's fine, as long as you don't look at the fuel gauge. <laughs> and so we can say, well, Sedona's in good shape. You know, we've well, got we $10 million uh, dollars in the general yeah, fund. $10 million dollars in the general fund reserve. We've got $20 million dollars in the wastewater fund reserve. We've got a couple million dollars in the capital fund reserve. You know, we're meeting our bills. We haven't done serious major cuts. Gosh, we're in great shape. As long as you don't look at the fuel gauge, which uh, look at those funds and look where their projection goes when they come to zero. Wastewater fund within four years goes to zero. Now, why uh, is that? Just because of the, the, the capital outlays the wastewater fund has for upgrades at the, the wastewater Well, plant? no, the wastewater fund simply costs us more to operate than what we take in. So every year we're running about a two to three million dollar deficit in that fund. Oh. And we keep draining down that, uh, that reserve fund. And so the projection. It's, really not, it's not the capital projects, it's just the actually ongoing operations are just in, in a deficit. Yes, in, in the wastewater fund. In the capital fund, we've simply got more infrastructure to try to, to repair and to maintain and to, to take care of than we have income to do that with. Well, I know I had read, a, I guess, I want to say, this concerning uh, memo that um, the city had put out about how the capital projects are $10 million a year projected if you wanted to do what all this, what everybody wanted, and there's one or two million dollars in that capital fund. Precisely. And you must remember a bunch of that in there is simply repair, replacement of things we already have. So over the years we've built all of this infrastructure, and we frankly did not, from what I can see, plan to deal with the operation and the maintenance and the upkeep and eventual replacement of that infrastructure. It's nice to borrow with bonds and get free money from grants and things, but but somewhere you've got to start planning for how you're going to take care of that and operate it and maintain it and replace it someday down the road. And I think that's what's really leading us into, into difficulties. Well, what you're basically, I mean, you know, it's just logical. Either the city's going to cut its costs or it's going to have to increase its revenue. And you can't get blood out of a stone. So is the city going to implement new taxes or is it going to start significantly cutting costs to meet these, to get everything in balance in the future, in your opinion? I think both. The answer is simply both, and, and we are, there's still, in my way of viewing it, a lot of money in the city budget that is going for things that we're not getting a return on, and we really need to look at those kind of things first. Before I'm interested in dealing with any major new tax source, I think we have got to seriously cut the city budget and look seriously at the kinds of things and what kind of return we're getting for, getting for them and what we're not. So that's the, that's the business of cutting, business of raising uh, revenue. Um, we've taught, we have a rate study on the sewer system the sewer right system. now. That seems like a and, lot of uh, increases coming. If you know, the, and, and that's raising an existing fee. It's not adding a, a new source of, of money to the, to the city. But the other simple reality is, Carl, that this city cannot just simply cram enough tourists into this town 
to get enough sales tax from them to ultimately pay all of the city's bills. We've been doing it for quite a long time, but as, the, as inflation goes up and the costs go up and the amount of infrastructure we've got to maintain goes up, we reach a point where you just can't jam enough tourists into town and extract enough out of their wallets to, to pay our bills. And we are going to have to seriously have a community conversation about what we want to do with, with, uh, with funding, what we want, what we want to pay for it, how we want to pay for it, uh, we need a serious community conversation about that. Um, I think that's a leadership role the council really needs to get started in. Okay, okay. Um, I have some few more questions, but maybe I'll skip a couple because I want to make sure we get we finish on time here. Um, I wanted to ask you about accessory dwelling units. Okay. These are, because we're in a different cult economy, these are these guest houses. I guess right now it's illegal to rent a guest house, whether... For 30 days or no, or not, or longer, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a proposal to establish allow allow residents to have to rent out guest houses for more than 30 days. That sounds like it would be a way in this tough economy mm -hmm. for people to make some some side money. Mm -hmm. um, you have been sort of against affordable housing, which these ADUs have been clumped with. Do you see an ADU as affordable housing? What do you think mm -hmm. about? accessory dwelling units, renting out guest houses? First of all, I think there's a misimpression there. I'm very strongly in favor of affordable housing. What I've, what I've had real concerns about is the approach that we've been taking to it. Trying to build affordable housing, we built one unit in the last five years rather than protecting what we have, for example. So my concerns about affordable housing have to do with, with the process and not with the fact that, it, that affordable housing is something that, uh, you know, is a solution to several of the problems that we have, or at least one solution. When it comes to ADUs, a couple things are going to happen. First of all, uh, a number of neighborhoods are not going to permit them because the CCNRs don't allow them. And uh, that will cut out those kinds of things. So there's going to be only a limited number of areas that those can then can add to. I don't think they're going to add a great deal to our affordable housing issue, but they can add some. And in terms of helping some folks uh, who have these uh, kinds of things supplement their income through them, uh, I think we can work out the kind of system where they're not intrusive in neighborhoods, because that's a concern. You know, it's another essentially dwelling on that property. It starts, you know, people are coming and going. It starts to mm -hmm. add to the, to the traffic in the neighborhood and the commotion in the neighborhood and the intrusion is the issue we've got to deal with. I think we can do that successfully and add a little bit, but... So if done right, you sound like you're in favor, but it has to be done yeah, right yeah. and correctly. You know, this yet has to come to council, has to go through planning Absolutely. and zoning. It's still in the planning stage. I need to see the whole proposal before you can try to make up any final decision in your mind. But, but at the moment, my inclination says that this is something we can probably make work if we work at it. Okay. Um, just one last question before we uh, wrap up here. Uh, uh, our associate editor and also the uh, the editor of the Southern Verde Valley Times wrote a fantastic, very interesting article or editorial on the way the council is potentially going to turn over over the next year with a new election, and the difference between going out for an election and having the the, the, the people decide who takes a spot and then appoint or appoint having the council appoint somebody. Just recently, uh, Mark Sterling, Councilman Mark Sterling, uh, resigned, and uh, that spot is going to be filled with an appointment rather than wait to the 2010 election. Uh, you were someone, you were in the minority, mm -hmm. who voted to let that spot be filled through election rather than appointment. What is your, what's your thinking on this? Why do you think, I, I guess I'm sort of curious, why did the majority in that win for appointment? Well, you know, it seems to me like it just, yeah, the, the, let the people vote. Well, that seemed what, obvious. What are the dynamics there? That seemed obvious to me as well. You know, and again, it's about a philosophy of government, mine being one that people should have a right to be involved in the decisions that affect their lives. And that means electing the people that are going to be making those kinds of decisions. Uh, it's the old Abe Lincoln uh, government of, by, and for the people kind of thing. Obviously, not everybody agrees with that with that particular approach, and so it's a different uh, philosophy. Um, and I really think that seat needs to be elected. We're at a time in the election cycle where it's easy to do, and to me it was obvious to do. Um, and, and that's certainly why I voted to support what I think is the, the public good in that regard. Okay. Well, there you have it from the dentist. <laughs> the dentist. <laughs> Councilman I hope, I hope Hamilton. I hope not call me Dr. Drill or <laughs> <Dr>. whatever. <laughs> so this is Carl Jackson, Sedona.biz. Cliff, thank you so much. You betcha. Thank okay. you.